your pastors here in Victory Las Piñas. And uh, once a month, I get to preach here in the 3 p.m. Uh, thank you, Pastor Rain. Me and Pastor Rain, we uh, do this every month just so that we could uh, really get to know more people. From uh, I normally preach in the 11 a.m. service. And so uh, we're going to be ending our series called Jesus Period. Can you say that to your neighbor right now? Jesus Period. All right. There was, um, I don't know if you've heard this before. I'm pretty sure you have because this, is, this was in a lot of books and a lot of like uh, seminars and whatnot. They said that men speak about 7,000 words per day and women speak 20,000 words per day. Okay? I don't know if you've heard that. Is this your first time hearing that, that information? All right. Guess what? Okay, because... I found out recently, I've been doing a lot, some reading on this topic recently, and um, did you know that that information was actually taken out of, of a pamphlet back in 1996? It's a marriage pamphlet of which there was no study to back it up. Hmm. We just assumed it's true. Because of many factors, I'll give some examples later. But apparently, it was debunked 2013. There was an, a newer study that came out. So, when I heard the newer study, it started making sense. Because I do hear, like, when I heard that, that men speak less words than women, but I do know a lot of men that are like, when will you shut up, bro? And I've met women that are kind of very reserved. So when I heard that, you know, maybe, maybe it's a unique thing. I don't know. But here's the current study. 2013. So that information, 7,000 words, 20,000 words, was used in a lot of books. And by 2013 onwards, it was kind of pulled out because it's apparently not accurate. The current study looks like this. Okay? So basically, they had a group study of about 500 people everyone wearing this particular machine that measures how many words that you use. Here's the average, just the average number, okay? Women can speak, on the average, about 16,000 words per day. Not 20,000, that's kind of apparently an exaggeration, okay? 16,000 words per day. Men speak about 15,000 words, 15,500 words. It's a 500 word difference. It's not a lot. I mean, it's still more. But here's why. Um, here's why it kind of, the, the first information was kind of welcomed. Um, women, for some reason, when you have your victory groups, the allotted time is an hour, right? You take about three hours. On the flip side, men can fill up the hour and sometimes it's 30 minutes. <laughs> Is that based on the number of words? Apparently not. Okay, so uh, because women, you, you easily can commune with one another. Like an instant. You just meet someone, you ask each other about it, and then if, if all of a sudden you can talk about so many things. Men are just not like that. So it's not the number of words. Okay? It's harder for us to immediately connect with someone all the time for the men. But here's the thing. Women, just a tip. Ask men about NBA. For, for, for our friends from India, ask them anything about cricket, football, video games, cars, and all the uh, Star Wars. <laughs> Marvel, ask. The words will be filled out, okay? So, with that said, why am I going in this tangent? The reason why is because basically what I'm trying to say, everyone loves to talk. I mean, at least on the average. Everyone has something to say. And that's why as we end this series, the whole discussion on Jesus' period or the theology of Jesus has such an effect on the way we speak, on our speech, and the way we talk. And that's actually what we're going to be looking at today. All right, why don't we all stand up? We're going to be reading. We're going to be ending it with Colossians chapter 4. Verses 2 to 6, and it says here, 
continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. So take note, Paul is in prison while he, while he was writing Colossians. That I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Lord, we thank you for this afternoon's word. Holy Spirit, open up our hearts and our minds so that your word, Lord, be embedded in our hearts so that it will transform us from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, you can go ahead and take your seats. Colossians. We've been talking about the book of Colossians over the past week. Um, Colossians really gave us a, uh, an overflow, an abundance on the theology of Jesus. We haven't really, you know, we, we've tried our best to cover the book of the, uh, Colossians over the past four weeks. But in truth, it's, it's not enough. There's just so much in the book uh, to talk about, but we only have four weeks to talk about this. Um, so, basically, what we've been talking about over the past four weeks, in through the book of Colossians, we're talking about the supremacy of Jesus. That Jesus is supreme, that He's above everything else. We talked about that in the first week. On the second week, we talked about how that affects our life, uh, how that affects um, the way we deal, and, 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 and basically just really um, our, affect our lifestyle. What does it mean to be Jesus, being the supreme being of everything in our lives? Third week, we talked about uh, the new man because of the supremacy of Jesus. Now that we are new creatures, now that we are no longer of the past, but we are now um, saved because we're saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. And so for the fourth week, it has actually everything to do with the way we speak, with the way we talk, with the way we express ourselves. The very first thing that it does Colossians 4, 2 to 3, con continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us also that God may open to us a door for the world to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. Prayer, the very first thing. One of the first things that's happened to us, if you guys remember the, the, the very day that you met Jesus Christ, immediately after that, prayer becomes a very natural thing. Before, depending on our culture, at least all of us, we have a, a, um, an idea of what a prayer is, whether or not we pray to God or to whoever or whatever. We know the concept of prayer. And for a lot of us, the concept of prayer has something to do with a very, uh, a very sacred time given on special locations or special events or when we need something. And the way we pray, uh, depending on culture, I, I, again, there are so many cultures represented here. We pray based on practice. Um, some of us memorize certain types of prayer just so we won't have any mistakes. Some of us um, pray certain words. For those of us, na, we came from a Christian background where there are certain words that we feel like can, should be used to a prayer. I remember there was a person I met. Every time he prays, his voice changes for some reason. Like he talks like this normally, like, hi, Messiah, how are you? But he, when he prays, he's like, oh, dear Father God. <laughs> what? Who are you talking to? Grace us with your presence today. And your Shekinah glory will be upon everyone here. Nourish us, God. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, I guess, if you talk like that. But we have a certain mindset on what prayer is. Really what it is, is communicating with God. It's, a, it's our, the, the word, uh, God talks to us through, God talks to us through the word, we talk to God through prayer. Um, you, if you've done one-to-one, -one, we discussed that a little bit there. And so when we pray, there are many things that basically communicating with someone. And when we communicate with God, it's prayer. And it could look so many, in many different ways. It could look like that, very formal, very sacred, but it can also very, look very informal. <sighs> Lord, I'm so tired today. I have so many deadlines, God. I don't know how to finish this. Please help me. That's a prayer. You actually just prayed. 
In fact, when the Bible says 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The reason why praying without ceasing or praying without stopping looks hard is if we have a certain mindset of what prayer is. But if we're in a constant situation, and maybe not 100% of the time, but we're always just trying to connect with God, like even just a mere word of, Lord, no words, God. That's a prayer. We pray without ceasing, meaning it's a lifestyle of prayer. When we met Jesus Christ, when we encountered the presence, His grace, His forgiveness, when we encountered the cross of Jesus Christ, uh, it becomes an automatic thing for us to communicate with God, and that is prayer. Who among you you had to pass by Danghari earlier? Anyone? I know, right? I don't know if you're not aware, the Anghari, the half of the road is being fixed. I, I say fixed because I don't think it's broken, but it's <laughs> fi- being fixed. Half of it, that's three lanes from around Versailles until that very end there. And then it were di- diverted into one lane. That's three lanes of cars diverted into one lane. It took me an hour to get here. <sighs> that was a good time to pray. <laughs> Lord, traffic, I'm going to be late. That's a prayer. And pray, we pray without ceasing. But at the same time, Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in, but in everything, no exception, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. With thanksgiving, we, part of it, Lord, is all traffic, I'm going to be late. But Lord, thank you that I'm still alive today. <laughs> That I'm, I'm in my car. It's so hot outside, uh, but right now we're comfortable even though it's traffic. You know, part of prayer, part of communicating with God is always uh, thanking Him. There was a story by Max Lucado uh, of a street child he met in Brazil, and this particular beggar, street child, was asking him for money. But instead of money, he said, oh, you know what? No, we're not, not going to give you money. Let's go to the coffee shop. I'm going to buy you some pastries and some drinks. And he brought the kid inside. And the eyes of the kid, when he gave him the bread, were just sparkling. And the moment he said, thank you, at least in the local language, in Portuguese, he wanted to buy the entire thing. Obviously, he didn't have the money. But just a mere thank you, even from a stranger, really left a mark on him. Imagine a lifestyle of just coming to God in thanks, in appreciation, in worship. And in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. But maybe we should be specific, no? I remember, I didn't tell this in the 11 a.m. because I told this before. There was a, I was part, um, I was an individual contributor for our school newspaper back in high school. I wasn't officially part of the team, but I contribute once in a while. But for some reason, when, they ha- when we had a competition for, uh, I-, I studied in Paranaque, it was a citywide competition. Ah, yes, it's a citywide competition, rather. Um, they included me in the contestants, in the, in the delegates for my high school to join the journalist, uh, journalism competition. Um, that sounds big. I am not a journalist. Uh, again, I just contribute individually, but for some reason, they allowed me to join. Um, maybe because they needed a number. <laughs> I, I'm, just trying, I'm just filling up a space, basically. And so because I'm just filling up a space, they put me in a category that I have no idea about. Sports English. I'm not sporty at all. And so I had to, what? All right, sure. So I did the, I I joined in, I, I wrote down my entry. We were about, based from the last time I checked, we were seven in that category, all over Paranaque. And so awards night came. So we were seven in that category, right? Awards night came. Apparently, they're going to get seven from each category to send to Metro Manila 
to compete nyo as Paranaque to Metro Manila per category. They need what? Seven. We were seven. And so I'm in. So my only prayer was, Lord, let me not be the seventh. You can just you not let me be the seventh because they're going to announce it on stage. And that's going to be the seventh place out of seven contestants. That's going to be ridiculous, okay? So I don't want to be, uh, I, I, I didn't want the whole announcement thing. So Lord, let me not be the seventh. I'm okay. My, te- my category came. They announced the seventh place. It's not me. Sixth place, not me again. Again, I was just a filler here. My only prayer was, Lord, don't make me the seventh. Fifth place, not me. Fourth place, not me again. And then my teacher turned around, looked at me. Edre, aren't you eight in the room? <laughs> what? Third place, not me. <laughs> Second place, not me. <laughs> I did not win, obviously. I wasn't the seventh. My prayers were answered. <laughs> I was the eight <laughs> out of seven contestants. That's the worst. If there's a rock bottom, I'm probably under the rock bottom, okay? But my prayers were answered. I just didn't pray right. And that's the thing. How do we pray right? How do we actually pray? Uh, is it because, should I have asked, Lord, make me the first place? Maybe. Here's, here's the dilemma. I'm, I'm going to give you an example. This is based on hypothetical events, okay? No, wait. I'm, gonna, I'm lying if I say hypothetical. Based on true stories. Single guy is praying for a single girl. Okay? Single guy is a man of God. He loves Jesus, disciples others, prays heavily every day. Same with a single girl, single lady. And then another single guy is praying for the same single lady. Loves Jesus, disciples others. Worship leader, victory group leader, ushering leader, part of the prayer team as well. But this guy leads a victory group in his office with about 50 people. Now, who will God listen to? The the lady. Apparently, the lady is praying for another single guy. <laughs> so that's a dilemma. Like, if, if prayer is just about asking, which is by all means we should, Jesus gave us an example of how, on how to pray. Part of it is asking for supplication, asking for what we need. And, you know, why not? Ask for what you want. Sure. But is that what re- prayer is only all about? It's not, though. Because the goal of prayer. And that's why we should keep praying even if we feel like the answers to our prayers are not being met. It's because the answer is not the point. The point of prayer is to get our hearts aligned with the will of God the more we pray. May it, the, I, pray I pray today, it, nothing happened, but my heart keeps moving and moving until it aligns to the, the will of God. And by that time it's aligned, my prayer now changes to the will of God and now it happens. Amen? That's the point of prayer. So imagine a life soaked in prayer. And maybe you're not going to receive the answer now. Maybe tomorrow, sure. But maybe the answer is not the point. The point is so that my heart gets to know the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And then that happens. Amen? That's why it's so important. Soak yourselves in prayer. Pastor Edwin, nothing's happening. Yes, because that's not the point right now. 
You may not have an idea, but something's happening in your heart. I mean, I'm, I'm very thankful, actually, to our uh, prayer teams. We have several prayer teams here, and every Sunday in, Sunday out, week in, week out rather, not just Sunday, they soak our services in prayer. If you're a part of the prayer team, can you raise up your hand? I just want to acknowledge you. Yeah! Oh, can you please stand up? Can you, actually, I want to please stand up part of any prayer team. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming maraming pong salamat. See, it's across the different demographics, okay? Thank you. You can go ahead and take your seat. Sobrang, I'm, I'm really, really thankful because we, we feel it. Every prayer that you soak us in, we feel it. And soaking is important. In fact, we're, um, we're about to start a project in the next few months. We want to start a prayer team that's full of kids. Um, because when kids pray, oh man, they're so strong. That's on another topic. But that's why we soak ourselves in prayer. But it's not just that. Colossians 4, 2 to 4, it says here, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us, that God may open to us a door for the world to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. His, the, the, one of the effects of us encountering the presence, the grace, the forgiveness, encountering Jesus, period, is now our mouths are ready to proclaim. There is a proclamation that happens in us. I mean, that's a human thing, actually. You watch your favorite movie, favorite K-drama, later we're going to finish this particular K-drama we've been waiting for like weeks. It's tonight. <laughs> I, I, I love talking about it. I love talking about other things. But that's why we love to talk. We love to share things. But imagine a life that has been turned around because of the grace of Jesus. You were here and now you're there. You were encountering uh, eternal death, but now you're encountering eternal life. Man, that's something to proclaim. It's the very thing that Peter was saying. He was proclaiming the mystery that we talked about a few weeks ago. What is that mystery? Christ in us, the hope of glory. The mystery that was now revealed to us because of Jesus Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory. What is Christ in us, the hope of glory? Because of the life we should have lived. Jesus lived the life we should have lived. He died the death we should have died. Paying for our sin, for our shame, for our biggest regret. He paid for my eternal death. But because he lived a perfect life, after three days, he rose up again, defeating the power of death, giving us eternal life, declaring that he is the Son of God. And now, because of that, we now have the presence of Christ with us, Christ in us. And because of what he has done on the cross, my hope for the, for the future is not ending in death, that there is eternal life, even after death, that I have eternal life because of Jesus Christ. That means whatever it is in the middle of eternal life and where I am now, I can hope for so many things because I am hoping and I'm going to glory because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. That's the hope of glory that we all have. That was the mystery that was revealed. That is the very thing that Paul wanted to proclaim. But here's the thing. When you're in prison, I'm not going to ask if you have been, okay? No judgment. Oh, let me change that. Not prison. Let's think of something lighter, okay? It's uh, December 23, and your boss asks you to go overtime until the 24th. What's, what will your prayer be? Your boss tells you to do that. What will your prayer be? Lord, double pay. Sure, yes, of course. What will your prayer be? Lord, can, can I get out of this? Can, can, you have, can I have an emergency at home? Lord, oh, no. Lord can, I, can I get out of this situation? That's normally what our, our prayer will be. Paul was in prison. And I'm pretty sure if we were, that's our prayer. Lord, can you get me out of this prison? But can we look at his prayer request while he's in prison? Can we flash the verse? Two to four. 
Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in, in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us, that God may open to us a door for the Word while in prison, to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear. That's his prayer request, which is how I ought to speak. His prayer request while being in prison was, Lord, can you give me open doors where I am while being stuck, while being locked, so that your word will be proclaimed and I will say it clearly. That's his prayer request. In prison. In fact, if you look back at his history, the very reason he's in prison is also an answered prayer. I'll show you. Acts 21, if you have your Bibles with you. Acts 21, 10 to 14. While we were staying for many days, Luke, the writer of Acts, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt, bound, it, bound his own feet and hands, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt, which is Paul, and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When he heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Paul, they were telling him, don't go up to Jerusalem. Don't. They will capture you. Verse 13, then Paul answered, what are you doing? Weeping and breaking my heart, for I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, he, we ceased and said, Ginustumuyan, let the will of the Lord be done. Paul was ready for this. Here's the thing he was not captured in Jerusalem. He was on the way there, he was not captured in Jerusalem. He got captured beforehand in a city called Caesarea. He spent two years there. After two years, he was brought to a higher court. They brought him to Rome where he spent a house arrest for another two years. And in this house arrest, four epistles were written. Colossians, Philippians, Ephesians, and a, book, and a letter to a man named Philemon or Philemon. While in the prison, while in a house arrest in Rome. And then in Acts 28, 30, it says here, he lived there two whole years in Rome at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God while in house arrest. Okay, every time someone visits him, someone will go there. Obviously, uh, when we say visitor, it, these are not just friends. These are officials. These are soldiers that need to check up on him, make sure that he is secure, and people that are going to guard him. In, uh, in, a lot of scholars were saying he was uh, chained to an imperial guard. That's how of a threat he was looked at. Um, he was chained to an, to, to an imperial guard. And every time this, that happens, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. And in another letter, uh, the book of uh, Philippians, also written while he was in prison, this is what it says. This is what Paul says. I want you to know, brothers, this was Paul saying this, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Me being in prison has really served to advance the gospel. I want to rephrase that line. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me in the hospital has served, has really served to advance the gospel. What has happened to me in my school even with all the, or in my company, with all the politics, with me not being promoted, with what, ha what has happened to me in my family, where everyone has turned against me, with what has happened to me in, in my health, with what has happened in my finances, with what has happened in my uh, in opportunities that I lost, with what has happened to me because of an accident, with what has happened to me because all of this has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known 
throughout the whole imperial guard and to, to, to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. What has happened to him has caused all the imperial guards to hear the gospel. If there is a PSG of our president, imperial guards are these are high ranking officials. There, there's a certain level of they cover the entire empire. They're not just covering certain cities. They're covering em the empire, imperial. Based from my own imagination, okay? Just my imagination. Didn't say in the Bible, but why not? Is it possible <laughs> that Paul had been praying to preach the gospel to the Caesar? And God's answer was, I'm going to send you in prison. Because that's how, you, that's how you're going to meet all these imperial guards. P imperial guards are chained to him, probably shifting every day. And then every time someone is chained to him or someone will visit him or check up on him, he's going to preach the gospel, he's going to share the goodness of Jesus. And all these people are hearing grace, forgiveness, the power of Christ through a prisoner that they are, they are guarding. And now because of what has happened, the word spread out. Maybe they're talking to other imperial guards or I'm imagining they were inviting other imperial guards. Come here, let's visit this guy. He has so much to say. And probably he had a victory group among imperial guards. All because he was in prison. So brothers and sisters, maybe there should be a different prayer. We should be praying today. Sure, maybe you're in a season of you're being stuck. Nothing's happening in your career. You feel like all your options are locked down. Maybe you feel like you're, you, you're kind of segregated from a certain groups of people. Maybe you're in a season where you just don't know where to go. You're in a season of a crossroad that I don't know what that season may be. Yes, breakthrough will happen. We want breakthrough for you. We're going to pray for breakthroughs for you. Maybe we're going to pray for healing, financial breakthrough, maybe a, 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 the resurrection of your business, new clients. We're going to be praying for that. We're going to be praying for promotion for you. But maybe before that, God wants you to pray while you're stuck. Are you going to pray for the open doors? For my word to seep in your office mates, your classmates, your family members, the people around you. Have we stopped to ask and say, Lord, I've been praying for this and it feels like unanswered. Maybe it's time for us to move a little bit closer to His will as we keep on praying and say, Lord, it seems like you want me stuck here. Why? What door are you opening? Who do you want me to talk to? What are you doing in my heart, God? Maybe you're stuck in a... Maybe you're, you, you, you own your own business. <clears throat> Very fruitful business. And all of a sudden, pandemic hits. And then everything just started declining. You started losing people. And you've been asking God for a new business. You've been asking for new strategies. And maybe once in a while there is, but it feels like it, you're just stuck at this moment. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a new business that you need to go to. Sure, maybe. But maybe at this moment, while we're waiting, God is saying, but while you wait, even in the middle of losing finance, pay your employees right and see what I'm about to do so that they will see that you are a righteous boss, you are a righteous leader, and that they will see me. Pastor Edra, I'm stuck in a marriage that's loveless. My husband or wife doesn't even care about me, doesn't know you. I don't have the answer to that, obviously. And I believe we're going to be praying for your marriage, most definitely. But maybe God is saying, but while you wait... Pray for open doors so that your children will get to know me more than ever. They will see a parent that even though uh, their spouse doesn't love them or doesn't feel like they love them, this is a spouse that will submit or love their husband or wife and they would give their lives to that so that they will see the message of the gospel through you, so that they will see whatever that is you're going through. It is because of my word. It's about to be poured out in your family. 
Maybe that's a prayer for this season. My child, God the Father is saying, pray for open doors, for the, world, for the word of Jesus to be proclaimed where you are. I'll open up the gates. That's not hard for me. I'll take you out of your situation. That's not hard for me. But while you're here, I need you to do something. I want you to do something rather. Because when we understand that Jesus is supreme, even in those moments, there was some... I didn't ask for his permission, so I leave out the name and a lot of the details. I was really encouraged by a friend of mine uh, who had a death in their family, a relative. And these relatives are, I'm not saying we're happy for the death. Obviously, we're mourning, they're in grief. But this is a family that has been very resistant to their faith. But for some reason, during the wake, one of the relatives just started asking, can, can you speak? Can you encourage us? Preach the gospel there. Relatives got saved. We had, um, imagine even a season of death. We're asking God, why would you let this happen? I don't know. But what I do know, that even in our saddest, our darkest, our most grieving season, even that moment, God can use so that His Word is spread. Maybe it's just a moment of, Lord, where do you want me to shift my eyes? Because I can't see anything right now. But what I do know is you're about to do something. I may not know what it is, but Lord, prepare me for that open door that you're about to open. Receive this as a prophetic word. But how else do we speak? And I believe this is the most powerful and when I say the most powerful, the one that speaks the loudest, we definitely have to pray. Of course, we have to proclaim the Word of God. We have to proclaim the gospel of Jesus, of course. But if you add this third one, it makes it even more powerful than ever. Colossians 4, 5 to 6, walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Verse 6, let your speech always be gracious filled with grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. If anything, more, uh, as we pray, as we proclaim, what makes it even loud is the way you practice your life, the way you live your life. There is a reason why a lot of people, I'm, I'm sure not all of their reasons are valid. Um, Maybe they, but a lot of people have left faith because of people that proclaim something and then practices another. But imagine, sure, the people are still going to say things about you, sure. But imagine a life that is so unquestionable because the practice, the life is just so powerful that every time they see you. you now, there's a reason why it's hard to preach the gospel to relatives or to old friends. There's a reason why. Because they've known us when we were, who we were. They've known our stuff. They've known our, the things that we've done. They know how the, the, the reactions and the actions and all the decisions. They've known it. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to come here and proclaim Jesus Christ. Sure, they're going to be like, eh, sure, I know you. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a good thing that they've known us where we were. Because we can finally be honest, but this is what happened to me. You may not believe it right now, but you're going to see. I'm going to continue praying. I'm going to continue proclaiming. But more than anything, I'm going to continue practicing my life. Not so that you will see me. Not so that, not, we, we don't practice Christianity for the sake of, oh, see that I'm giving my tithes and offering. Pastor Edre, look, I'm putting, it in the, putting the envelope on the, oh, see, my, my dear Victory Group leader, how nice I am. I am driving for you. See, I am not reacting to any motorcycles right now. See? It's not that. Kids love to do that. <laughs> but it's not about looking at us. We're technically the moon here because no one can look directly at the sun. I mean, you can try. But at the moon, we can always look at the moon. And it brings us light. A lot of people cannot encounter God per se. In fact, the Bible says we cannot see the face of God and live. 
Because sometimes the light is just too bright. But when they see someone reflecting the light of God in their lives, man, they may say it or not, but they see it. They see that reaction that you did. When you were not promoted, this person who had the backer, who had the padrino, who had the ninong, or the godfather, or godmother in their company got promoted over you, and you chose there to say, you know what, Lord, this is not my time. I know it hurts. I know it hurts to be looked over, but I'm going to stay here. I'm going to honor. I'm going to work because you're my boss. Someone's looking at you and seeing that light. And your message of the gospel has never been so loud. Someone's looking at you at home. When your spouse has chosen to ignore you, you've been loving on them, you've been serving them, but your spouse would rather just be somewhere, not honor the vow that he or she has given you. Someone's looking at you and saying, I don't want this kind of marriage, but my mom or my dad is just a totally different person. I don't know what it is. Someone's looking at you in school where they know you had a hard time studying and yet you chose to not look at ChatGPT. Just kidding. Not look at the... Not cheat, basically. Someone's looking at you. I'm not saying we perform for their sake. I'm just saying someone's looking at you. And you're not going to be perfect many times. There, there will be a lot of times where that, uh, I'm not telling you to, be, to live a perfect life because someone's looking at you. I'm saying that even in your imperfection, because when we admit that we are wrong, someone's looking at you, wow, this person is, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Oh, I'm, I'm so, someone's looking at you. 1 Peter 2.12, as the music team comes up. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds, they may see it, and glorify God on the day of visitation. What's the point? What's the entire point? When your action and your lifestyle speaks the loudest of the Word of God, they're not going to see you. They're looking at you, but they're not going to see you. They're probably not aware. They're probably one of those people that's talking bad about you. They're not going to see you because every time they look at you, they see something else. And maybe they don't understand. But ultimately, what they're looking at is Jesus, period. Every time you talk, every time you react, every time you just live your life, basically what I'm saying, every time you rely on the grace of God in every situation that you're going through, you're having a hard time making a decision, you're you're trying to control yourself even though you're having a hard time because people are saying things about you, this relative has been saying this about you, your business is not going well, Your, your career is not going well, finances has not been going well, and yet because of your faith, because you understand that Jesus is supreme, He is far above anyone else and now because of whatever I want here on earth Lord I just want your will I just want my will to align to your will and even though you're doing that personally someone's looking at you and saying what is it that you have I want that also they're seeing Jesus period not Pastor Rain not Prudvi not Doc Rashia they may think it's you but they're seeing Jesus, period. So what we're going to do today is we're going to change our prayers and say, Lord, I'm under something today. I'm going through something today. Individually, as a family. In fact, I'm going to invite you all to stand up. But we're going to change our prayer to, Lord, with what I am in and what I am going through today, I pray for open doors for your word to be preached, to be proclaimed. Why don't you grab a partner right now? Praise God. Let us 
continue to be in prayer. The Lord is at work in us and also through us. The Lord is at work in you and through you. You are His masterpiece. And His glory will be seen in you. As situations that we face, difficult, unexplained questions that we have, na wala namang sagot, walang answers. Pero know that the Lord is sovereign, He is in control, and His, na His name will be glorified in our lives. Let's take this time to continue to declare our surrender, ang pag-yield, let's yield our hearts to the Lord. Join me in a word of prayer. Let's lift up your hands. Lord, this life that I am living, this life that we are living, use it, Lord, for your glory. Use it, Lord. I yield to you. Let people see, let people know, beyond any shadow of any doubt, that you are God, that you are good. Lord, thank you for the open doors or the doors that you will open. Thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, you will cause it to happen, that your name will be glorified. So, Lord, we declare open doors in the families, even right now. Open doors, Lord, to the community. Open doors, Lord, in our workplaces. Open doors, Lord, in the universities. Lord, there's going to be open doors. And Lord, they will see who you are. You are Jesus. And Lord, we give you glory. I release your word, Lord, upon your people, upon us today. That says, let our light so shine before men that people will see the good works and give glory to you because you are the source of of everything and Lord our lives once more Lord is for the greater glory and honor of your name release a blessing upon your people today and allow us to be your channel of blessing to our friends our families our communities thank you Lord for your message your word will not return void thank you for the preaching of your word we receive it in our hearts and believe it Lord that it will bear fruits and Lord, thank you. When we see the open doors, when we see people coming to you, Lord, we will remember this day that truly, Lord, your glory will be seen. So Lord, thank you, Lord, for this afternoon. Release a blessing upon each and every one of us. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn toward you and grant you peace. That the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Our service has ended, but our service to the community continues. So go be a blessing. You are a blessing. God bless you guys.